So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm a holistic nutritionist and high fat enthusiast behind the site healthfulpursuit.com and I help women regulate their hormones, balance their metabolisms, and generally be awesome by eating more fat. And something super exciting. So we've been doing these Q&As every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern and now we have sponsors. So our first sponsor is Organic India. They make the original Tulsi tea. And you guys have heard me talk about Tulsi and Organic India in the past. This is super exciting. Having partners allows me to continue to do these free sessions. And so every week um, we'll have different partners partnered up with us. Organic India is gonna be our partner for a little while. They're super supportive of the podcast and the blog and now our Q&A, so it's really exciting and I'm really happy to have them on board. So as I said, every Thursday, Q&A day, Thursdays, 10 a.m. If you miss any of the recordings, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash live and it will take you to all of the things that I upload on YouTube. Yeah, so our first question came in while we were preparing for the video. So we're gonna um, answer that one first and then we have Periscope people over here, Facebook people over here. Uh, once I'm done the question, I'll kind of rotate between you guys and you guys and we'll get through about eight questions is usually how it ends up. So for those that aren't familiar with ketogenic, it's a low carb, high fat eating style where we're burning fat as energy instead of carbohydrates as energy. How we do that is going low carb and high fat so that it encourages our body to burn our fat stores as energy. So the first one came in on Periscope, as I said, and that's adrenals and exercise. So in the case of ketogenic, there are a couple of different approaches and I'll bring up um, this in a second after I answer your question. Um, so if you are uh, ketogenic and you want to heal your adrenals, there are a bunch of different things that you can do. Um, the first one being stopping exercise, whether you're keto or you are not. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to block a bunch of people because it makes it pretty hard to see people's questions when everyone is talking <laughs> and being ridiculous. So let's give that a whirl. Um, so with with ketogenic, you're removing exercise, and I found that for my own adrenal health, this was really, really helpful for me, especially if you are in stages three or four. Especially if you're in, oh geez, guys, sorry about that, so much spam and inappropriate stuff coming in. So especially if you are in a state of um, ketosis or you're in a state of stages three or four adrenal dysfunction, it can be super helpful to stop adrenal fatigue, or sorry, to stop working out so that you can heal your adrenals. If you're in stage one or two, and how do you know stage one, two, three, four, what are you talking about, Leanne? Um, stages one and two are when your cortisol is actually higher. The best way of knowing this is to do a blood test. In stage three or four, your cortisol is actually lower, so that means that your body's not producing enough cortisol. Usually what can happen in these stages three or four is um, that you're really, really tired during the day or you get wired at night. Those can be some really good signs or you're having a really, really hard time building muscle. Now this is where the lack of exercise or removing exercise happens or can happen um, because if you're not producing enough cortisol, no matter what you do, you're not going to build muscle because you need that cortisol to build muscle. So if you're exercising and nothing's happening um, and you just keep pushing and you're not losing weight and you're not building muscle, it can be super frustrating and no amount of working out while your cortisol depleted are going to um, help things. So what you can do, whether you're keto or vegan or whatever eating style you're doing, um, removing exercise at least temporarily can be helpful to allow your adrenals to rest and the way I saw it when I stopped exercising because of my cortisol issues was that um, I was actually doing my body a service because my body couldn't heal like no matter how much I exercised I wasn't doing well by my body so it really didn't matter whether I was exercising or not I I wasn't building muscle, I wasn't doing the things that I wanted the exercise to do. 
So to answer your question, it was how long do I have to stop exercising? Um, this can vary. For me, it was about nine months until I could start um, like for sure walking every day. Like I walked throughout the experience, but I wouldn't I wouldn't like force myself to walk. I maybe do like two, maybe three walks. Um, so in January, I, did, I stopped in May. I started back up in January. I started walking every day and more intense walking like up hills and things and listening to my body. And then um, I also started doing yoga. Now this was a half of yoga, super, super chill. Um, before that I was doing restorative yoga. So it's like laying on your mat and stretching. Um, so that was an exercise that I did during um, healing my cortisol levels. Um, and then uh, I started up with more of an intense yoga. So I went from Hatha and then more of a Vinyasa and then to a power. And so now I'm more in the power yoga realm, but power's way too powerful when you're going through adrenal dysfunction. So it can range. It depends how messed up your adrenals are. Um, Adrenal fatigue is very apparent, right? Can you have it or not realize it? Yeah, you can. I had it for a really long time and didn't like, I just didn't know that what I was experiencing um, was, was what was happening and what the cortisol was doing. So I'm going to flip this around so you guys can see it. Try to get it on both screens. It's always hard with the lights. Okay, so it's healthfulpursuit.com forward slash fat fueled. If you use the coupon code Periscope, all in caps, no spaces, you get 10% off your fat fueled program. So fat fueled is the program that talks a lot about adrenal dysfunction, how to heal adrenal dysfunction while on keto and what fat fueled profile to go for. So you can just take a screenshot or somebody can type it down in the comments, healthfulpursuit.com forward slash fat fueled. And I'll leave that coupon code open for a couple of hours so you guys can use it. And if you're watching this on the replay, I'll include a link up in the corner for this. Okay, I'm going to flip it around. Okay. So that was the first question. Fat fuel changed my life for reals. Healthfulversuit.com. Thanks so much. Symptoms of adrenal fatigue. Let's go through that. Symptoms. Fat fueled. Okay. Symptoms of adrenal fatigue. Okay, so if you are on the higher end, so that's stages one or two, some of the symptoms can include um, uh, anxiety and um, like uppityness. Um, a lot of stage one and two adrenal fatigue uh, clients that I have been working with, yeah, waking up when they're tired, like waking up tired. So regardless of how long you sleep, you're still tired in the morning and you have a hard time peeling out of bed. Um, another a couple of things could be um, in more of the three or four uh, stages is that you're not building muscle, you're having a hard time losing weight, maybe your hormones are a little bit wonky, maybe your period is off if you're a woman, um, what else? Uh, you can have issues with gluconeogenesis, so that's your body. Um, that's when your body creates glucose for itself when you're in a ketogenic state. So if you find in ketosis, um, say week three, you're having breakfast and you're just like super tired after you eat or um, you're having um, symptoms of insulin uh, sensitive, or um, wow, seriously, Thursday, insulin imbalances. Uh, that can be a sign where all of a sudden you feel like your blood sugar is really, really high. Um, that can happen when you're in keto and your cortisol is a little bit lowered. I'm trying to think if there's any other symptoms. Um, I would say just like majorly, um, energy imbalances. Like you wake up, you're tired, you go through the day, you're tired. Maybe at night you're totally wired. Maybe at the gym you have so much energy and then right after you're totally pooped. Like your energy, you should wake up and have pretty like awesome energy when you wake up like I'm getting out of bed life is good you have a shower you get ready um, not like dragging yourself and in the afternoon you shouldn't be tired in the afternoon that's not actually a thing um, if you're always reaching for coffee to get yourself going that can be some of the symptoms so those are just some things that come to mind that could be um, from the symptoms that you're experiencing okay let's go over to Facebook what is a good Starbucks keto friendly drink? Okay, I know the answer to this because I have it all the time. Um, 
Okay, the first one, if you want something cold, um, I order a Trenta, <laughs> duh, a Trenta passion tea, iced passion tea. Oh, yeah! <laughs> a lot of people just said the same thing on Periscope. Um, so yeah, an unsweetened passion iced tea is my favorite. Um, you can also do an unsweetened green tea, unsweetened black tea. I just like the passion because caffeine and me don't mix. Um, so that's what I do for ice. And then usually, I usually have packs of stevia in my purse that I add. And if I want to be to totally crazy, I'll order a venti in a Trenta cup. So that there's a lot of space at the top. And then I add in my collagen to that. And that works really well. And they even have like this powdered lemon stuff that you can get at the store and I have a bunch in my purse and then I can add that and then I make my own lemonade. It's so great. And then for hot drinks, I usually get a decaf Americano is kind of my go-to and again I add stevia to that. Um, if you can do dairy, I would ask for a decaf Americano Misto with um, full fat milk. Um, I think they have whipped cream. Now in the States, they won't know what a decaf Americano Misto is. This is a Canadian thing. I have no idea how to order it in the States. I always get confused um, with all of that. <laughs> um, but I think it's basically Americano. Oh, you guys, do you guys have Americano coffee in the US? I'm sure you do. Um, uh, you can ask for an Americano latte, I think is similar, but like less milk. Me still should only be like this much milk. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question. That's kind of um, what, I, what I do at Starbucks. Yeah, um, and somebody just asked about the collagen. I put my collagen in prescription bottles. Like I just went to the, the drugstore and asked for little prescription bottles and then I just fill up the collagen in that. Decaf Americano, cool. Starbucks has coconut milk, but it does have sugar. Yeah, so if you're getting a Misto, when I order a Decaf Americano Misto with coconut milk, um, I think the grams of carbs, because it's only a little bit of milk, I think it's seven grams of carbs. So if I'm out and like seven grams of carbs, like grand scheme of life, if I'm out with girlfriends and I want it, I'm gonna have it. I use Vital Proteins Collagen for that. Yeah, and I do the same thing with the hot drink. Just ask for a grande and I get, or ask for a tall and put it in a grande cup and then I have extra room for the collagen. So there you go, Starbucks Keto 101. Um, okay, there was a question that came in on our Facebook group. So um, basically I'm just gonna uh, condense it. This lady has PCOS, she has all the symptoms of PCOS and thinks that she has insulin resistance, but when she went for blood work, her insulin was actually below the normal range and um, she's been told that this could come from eating a low-carb diet except for veggies. But strange because she has symptoms of insulin resistance. So you can still have insulin resistance and rather low insulin depending on the type of like the day or the time of day that you're testing it and so many different variables. So if a blood test is saying one thing but you're experiencing another thing, like a huge awesome example is my thyroid. Like, I know when my thyroid is messed up. <laughs> like I can feel it. I know when I'm taking too much medication. I know when I need to stop taking the medication. I know my body pretty well. I know the signs and symptoms. I know when it doesn't feel right. So I don't go off the blood test, although the blood test is really nice for me to know my TSH and free T3 and all those things. But for me, it's really important to listen to my body. And I know that if a blood test says my free T3 is low, but I feel like it's high, I'm gonna to listen to my body. So I think if you feel like you're having, if you feel like you're having, you know, issues with insulin resistance or insulin overall, I would treat yourself like that. And definitely get tested. Like everyone knows I'm a huge advocate of testing. Um, but also go off your body and go off how you feel instead of listening to, you know, 100% listening to the doctor and going with what they say. Try to find a medical professional that will take your experiences into account. Um, so I hope that answers your question. There's been a question popping up about biotin and candida. Sorry, I have no clue about that. Don't know, no idea. I'm not a candida specialist um, and I, I'm not sure. So um, somebody you might want to check out is Ricky Heller, rickyheller.com, 
and she will be able to help you with that. I am sure. I'm totally sure. Eating fat fueled. Um, uh, okay. Um, eating fat fueled and still having an issue with vitamin A. Absorbing vitamin A. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, Rachel, do you have amenorrhea? Have you ever had amenorrhea? Issues with your period? Um, absorbing vitamin A can be a little bit tricky. Um, in my experience, my vitamin A and vitamin D are really, really um, condensed. Not condensed. Joined at the hip is what I meant to say. Um, they're really joined at the hip. So I kind of have to like play with a little bit of more vitamin A, a little bit more vitamin D, D, A, D, A, D, A, D, and it slowly goes up like this. So um, I would encourage you to, I mean, there are a couple of options that you can do. No, no issues with your period. Okay, that's awesome. A couple things you can do. Um, make sure that you're taking the right vitamin A. A beta carotene is useless, basically. Your body has to actually convert it. And if you're having problems with vitamin A, don't, don't rely on your body to convert it, especially if you're having absorption issues, like that's number one. Um, so I would go for more of the retinol-based foods, so that's gonna be like liver, and if you're animal-based foods, if you can do grass-fed um, beef, awesome. Grass-fed butter, awesome. Um, those two are really, really good. And uh, a retinol supplement, so um, I use, and I'll include a link up here and also down below on my vitamin A supplement. I can't remember the name of it. If you're watching this on the replay, I'll put it up there. Um, Claire Labs, I want to say. Claire Labs, is that a thing? Um, it's a retinol drops. You might want to check that um, and see. Uh, and then also for vitamin A, you can do injections. That's been super helpful for me in vi my vitamin A absorption. A multivitamin, it's not going to have enough vitamin A if you're having issues with absorption. Um, I would check your vitamin A level, like test your vitamin A. It's a blood test. Um, how to know if you're not absorbing vitamin A, you're taking a whole bunch of it and it's not making a difference in your blood work, um, which has been so, so my, my experience. Um, so keto will help because vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, um, but it's just gonna take time. Like my vitamin A has moved up 0.1 points like every three months for like two years. So it just takes time. A lot of us are vitamin A deficient um, that's a real thing because we are usually fat deficient and we have been fat deficient for quite some time. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. Therefore, if you're not eating enough fat, you're not going to um, absorb that vitamin A. So if you're eating vitamin A rich foods, I would make sure that you're loading it with fat. So I eat about a pound of liver um, every two days and I make sure that there's tons of fat all up in there. Or if I'm having epic bar bites or epic bites, excuse me, um, that are the beef liver kind, I dip them in like mayo or like eat it with a high fat meal or add it to a salad so that you can make sure that you're having enough fat with that vitamin A. So that would be my tip for you. Can you be keto without eating high fat? No, that's not a thing. You can't. You need to eat fat. And yeah, yes, you need fat. You need all the fats. Regardless of what eating style you're doing, chances are you probably need more fat. You need fat. <laughs> um, how many grams of carbs should we be striving to be under? When you're adapting, when you're adapting to keto, so this means that um, this is like your first 10 to 14, sometimes 20 or 30 days, um, into eating keto, your body needs to adapt to eating this way. So this is the adaption phase is um, encouraging your body to burn fat as energy. So it's like constantly sending the message like, hey girl, like, we're using fat as energy, not carbs. We're using fat as energy, not carbs. So this can take a little while for people. It took me, took me about 20 days like fully to adapt. Um, and how you know that you're adapted is that you're going for fat um, you're going for fat as energy instead of carbohydrates. So one thing that I noticed when I actually fat adapted was that uh, I craved fat for energy when I was tired or I needed a pick me up and that was a really good indication. So in that moment where you're going through that adaption phase, 
You can usually get adapted with 50 grams of total carbs or less. It's going to be less for some people, more for more people, um, more for some people rather. Um, so it really depends. I adapted at 50 grams of carbohydrates every day. Now that's total carbs and net carbs. It was around 30, 20 to 30 around there. So that's with the fiber removed, right? So, um, yeah, so I would, I would look at that. And then once you are fat adapted, so once you've gone through that 10 to 20, 21, 30 days and you're fat adapted, then you can slowly increase the carbohydrates, usually by like five grams, like just add a little bit more until you notice that your ketones are a little bit wonky and then go down again and you can kind of kind of play around with that. I talk about that a lot in my program, The Keto Beginning. I'll include a link up here and also down below for The Keto Beginning. And since we talked about um, fat fueled earlier, I'm just gonna go to um, the bundle. Now the bundle includes both of these programs. I'll just flip it around. Healthfulpursuit.com forward slash bundle. That's my program that includes the keto beginning and fat fueled. So you get the introduction to how to eat keto and talking about fat adaption and increasing your carbohydrates once you're adapted, as well as healing your body body with like adrenal fatigue and thyroid and all the things. So you can take a screenshot of that and I will flip that around. Um, okay, next question. Let's keep going. We got a little bit more. Oops. Um, let's go back to the questions. We have one more on Facebook group. Uh, what causes menstrual irregularities on keto? Um, spotting during periods or losing your period after going keto when periods were regular before starting keto. The menstrual cycle. Keto result, um, keto will help you lose a lot of weight really quickly. In fact, I lost weight so, so quickly. <laughs> that I had to chill out and even now I really have to watch with my carb ups and everything to make sure that I'm not going too hard at it because I lose weight really quickly and my period stops. So I would look at I would look at uh, how much fat you're eating and make sure that you're actually eating enough because oftentimes what happens is that our body has this weight set point that it knows it feels really really good at and uh, that's when our hormones are at its best. So when we start eating more fat and we start losing more weight, our period's probably gonna go away if that weight set point was where it was at before. That's usually what happens. Um, the other thing is that we are increasing or rather regulating our cholesterol levels. So sometimes that can happen, um, but that's very, very rare. Usually when we're regulating our, our, our cholesterol levels, there, our periods are actually getting better. Um, so yeah, somebody just on Periscope said, um, starvation is real. <laughs> starvation is a real thing. So if you are not eating enough or you're losing weight too quickly, you are going to lose your period, like period, <laughs> pun intended. Okay. So, um, I would look at those two things and that question came in, um, from our Facebook group. And if you have any of my keto programs, then you have access to that Facebook group too. But some of those questions that come in there, I just like to answer them on here because it's nice to talk about it. Um, okay. So how much protein, how much protein do we need to eat at each meal? Okay. This varies. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I like to go with a palm size of protein. Some people may say that's too much on keto. For me, it works great. Um, protein, a lot of people say that protein can stimulate glucose creation through gluconeogenesis, but gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven process. So your body is not gonna be like, oh, there's extra protein, let's turn it into sugar. Um, because gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven state, which means that your body will only create glucose if it needs it, okay? so in that gluconeogenesis pathway that's like that's the kind of caveat with that so i like to do about 80 to 100 grams of protein a day now with my weight that's like 0. 0.75 yeah that's about 0. 0.75 um per pound ish but you can start at around 0. 0.5 grams for every pound that you weigh up to like 1.5 grams for every pound that you weigh 
Yes, the best way to do it is off lean tissue, but a lot of people don't know what their lean tissue is. Of course, lean, lean muscle, like if you want to actually know the protein amount that you should be eating, it's best to get your lean tissue measured. Um, I, I like the DEXA scan or the one under the water, I can't remember what it's called, um, but that will tell you uh, what your lean muscle mass is and then you can base your protein off that. Rule of thumb, really, when it comes down to it with protein, is have protein and thank you hydrostatic thank you um, hydrostatic is where you're going under the water and you're getting that that test done to know what your lean muscle mass is um, rule of thumb though is if you are um, ketogenic I would start off with less protein um, it is very muscle sparing when you're in a ketogenic state to have less protein but you also m need to make sure that you're having enough um, I know that when I eat too much protein, especially as a ketoer, I, I don't feel quite right and it stimulates my appetite quite a lot, which is okay, like it's okay to be hungry, um, but it just feels a little bit off to me. So I would start off with like a palm size, maybe even a half a palm size at every meal, and then see how you feel with that, and then if you're feeling like too high, too low, you can adjust from there. So I hope that answers your question. I would start around 50 grams ish, depending on your weight and work your way up. Okay. Let's, let's go through one more question. We have like one minute, something quick. Um, oh, there were so many things that came through on Periscope and then nothing. Okay. Let's see if there's one. I'll be scooping. Okay, greens, plateaus, digestive enzymes, keto and acne. Okay, should you drink the amounts of water? Okay, here's here's a good one. Water and keto. Water and keto. I think you should drink as much water as you feel like. Water is like this tricky little thing. Like I always keep a bunch of bottles and stuff to the side of my uh, desk and I just drink throughout the day. Um, and... I mean, in a day, I'm probably having like three liters right now. I don't know. Um, when I do feel like a bubbly drink, I drink Kavita. I actually have some right here because I was sipping on it this morning. Um, and that just helps like when I feel like a fizzy drink and I want something nice, I'll have that. Um, but I think it's just important to drink throughout the day. Always have a water bottle with you. When you have a moment, take a sip and just be mindful of your um, intake. Now, when it comes to keto, if... If you're having an issue with electrolytes, I like adding lemon and a little bit of Himalayan rock salt to my water and a little bit of aloe juice. I call that keto lemonade and it's in my program, The Keto Beginning, so you can check that out. Um, and somebody's asking Kavita. Kavita is a sparkling fermented drink. It's like um, kombucha, but it doesn't give me acne because kombucha makes like gives me the worst acne ever. Yeah, it's not good for my body. Um, I'm drinking the strawberry acai coconut flavor. It looks different in Canada. Like we're behind the times. We have like the old Kavitas. Yeah. So we made it through another Q&A. Uh, this time goes so fast and there's so, so, so many questions that come in. Um, oh, one quick one. Uh, what do, why does it give you acne? Uh, I have no idea why kombucha gives me acne. I think it has something to do with... Um, with the strains of bacteria that are in it. I have no idea. It just gives me the worst acne, so I avoid it. Sometimes you don't need to know why. Just don't ask why. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks guys. Thanks so much for joining in. I do this every Thursday. Um, and sometimes I look like I have my stuff together. <laughs> sometimes I don't. Um, we do this every Thursday, 10 a.m. Uh, 8, I guess that's 10 a.m. Eastern uh, and 7, or sorry, it's 8 a.m. Mountain. So somewhere in there. Love to see you guys every week. And if you miss these, you can watch them on the replay, healthfulpursuit.com forward slash live. And I have a really, 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 really exciting announcement for next week. So be sure to tune in live or check out that video. Very exciting news. Super awesome to share it with you finally. Um, so I will see you guys next Thursday. And if you want to listen to our podcast, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast. I mentioned it a couple of times in today's recording. So you can check that out. And I will see you guys next week. Yeah. Okay. Bye.